My buddy David Picciuto over at the Make Something channel just recently released a video where he made a wine rack, a hexagon cool wine rack out of wood. And I thought it would be interesting if we could use 3D design and 3D printing to recreate the wine rack that he made using PLA plastics. Well, I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. Oh, man. I always end up gluing myself to myself. David Picciuto is a masterful woodworker. At least he, he makes you think he is on his YouTube channel. And I have no doubt in real life he is an awesome person worthy of all the high fives possible. He made a hexagon wine rack. It was these hexagon pods that the wine bottles could fit in. And then there were these triangle support structures to hold it together. And it turned out really great and it looked awesome. And he was able to show how to make it using these really cool woods, laser cutter, and then he showed himself drinking some wine. It was a fantastic video. I really hope you watch it. I used it as inspiration. So what I'm gonna do is use Fusion 360 to model the necessary parts. And then I'm going to use nine different 3D printers. I had an idea, so I'm 3D printing with one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, nine 3D printers. <laughs> to print them out, let's get started. In Fusion 360, the design is fantastically simple. Essentially, what you do is use a polygon sketch, and then I dimensioned it so that between the two inner flat parts, it was 90 millimeters after I used calipers to measure a couple different wine bottles. With that, then I did an external offset 12.7 millimeters because that's half an inch, essentially. And then I added a little, uh, that little triangle off to the side and that triangle was the support triangle. From there, all I had to do was extrude the triangle piece, uh, half an inch, 12.7 millimeters. I extruded the hexagon shape 254 millimeters, which is 10 inches. And then all I did was add a chamfer to the side of the, the wine rack. So it had this little kind of 45 degree bevel on it. It looked great and it followed along with the design that David Picciuto did, so I thought, Great, I'm gonna export as an STL the hexagon, and I'm gonna export as an STL the triangle, and then I'm gonna print them all out. Of the nine 3D printers that I wanted to use, I realized that not all of them could print a full 10 inches in the Z axis. So then I went into the patch workspace in Fusion 360 and did a patch extrusion and used that to split the model of the hexagon shape and then it came in two parts, which I could then print separately. I took notes because this all happened at like four o'clock in the morning when I had some wild idea. All right, here we go. The Ultimaker 3 was outfitted with the Hawk 3D Proto Crimson Red, and it was printing one of the half pieces. The Ultimaker 2, which has a ruby nozzle on it, was outfitted with the Proto Pasta carbon fiber PLA. Oh, I love that stuff, it is so good. The FormBot T-Rex 2 Plus was using the 3D Fuel Biome filament, the same stuff that I made that really loud noisemaker with. The CR-10S4 was using Strong Hero 3D PLA, and the GMAX 1.5 XT Plus was also using Strong Hero 3D PLA. The Raze 3D N2 Plus was outfitted with the Hawk 3D Proto Emerald City PLA. It's fantastic, I love that stuff. One of the Prusa Mark II 3D printers was using the red filament that I actually got with the Prusa Multi-Material printer. Uh, I, there was no name on it, but it's a really great kind of burgundy red color, so I, I use that. On the other Prusa i3 Mark II 3D printer, I'm using a yellow PLA. There's no name on it, and I don't know where it came from, but it's yellow and it's PLA. So we're gonna use it. Finally, on the Sigma R17 from BCN 3D, I'm using the right extruder, which is using a 1.0 millimeter brass nozzle from the BCN 3D nozzle set. It's, it's actually a, a really cool little set of a bunch of different nozzles and you can swap them in and out. And I got that thanks to Matter Hackers. And I'm starting with Melt Ink PLA. Look at that, see, I wrote a list down. 
on my high five note paper. This was all at, let's see, I started the design at, I think it was two o'clock in the morning. I don't know, inspiration struck after watching David's video and it's, uh, I think I went to bed at 5.30 in the morning that night because I just got everything started. I had to get all the printers running. I verified all the first layers were good to go. And then I went to bed. It's true. I sleep sometimes. All right, wakey, wakey. I got some coffee. I woke up and I came to check the prints. And uh, just to make sure I remember, the Ultimaker 3 was printing incredibly well with the Hawk 3D Proto Crimson Red and it was looking great. Uh, the Ultimaker 2 with the Ruby Nozzle was printing the Protopasta Carbon Fiber PLA and it was looking great as well. The Formbot T-Rex 2 Plus with the 3D Fuel Biome PLA, um, it was doing a, a good job. I don't think I have my extrusion settings perfect on that machine because there's a little bit of variation in the layers it's laying down, but it still looks fantastic. The CR10S4 was printing with the Strong Hero 3D PLA, and I was using uh, some default settings off of a Simplify 3D profile I got off of a Facebook group, and it's it's a little bit slow, so I know this one's gonna take a while. The GMAX 1.5 XT Plus with the Strong Hero 3D PLA was humming along just great, and I knew that that part was uh, most likely going to succeed just fine. The Raise 3D N2 Plus uh, running the Hawk 3D Proto Emerald City. It just looked gorgeous. I love that filament. It looks amazing. And I'm, I'm really excited to get the piece off of the N2 Plus machine. The Prusa Mark II running the red filament and the Prusa Mark II running the yellow filament. Well, they were done. Of course, printing just these triangles, it wasn't going to take very long. It was going to take far less time than the hexagons. But it was done and they turned out okay. Finally, we're down at the Sigma R17 from BCN 3D, and uh, the, the melt ink was gonna run out. I, I, I'm really glad I checked it. And so thanks to the BCN 3D Sigma R17, I can pause the print and it offers me the ability to change the filament. And it's a really easy procedure. So I traded out the melt ink for the Hawk 3D Proto nightshade and it is a brilliant purple and that's what we were going to complete the print with on that machine and there we go that's it i just have to let everything run so i guess i just have to wait I need that piece of paper i waited until all of the print jobs were done all of the 3d printers all nine of them uh, were done printing and uh, the full hexagons actually took somewhere depending on the machine between 23 and 30 hours, which is just crazy. The smaller ones on the Ultimakers, those took, um, I think 13, 14 hours. The CR10 S4 took the longest just because of the profile, but let's get started. All right, the Ultimaker 3 was done. The Ultimaker 3 with the Hawk 3D Proto Crimson Red looked great, and with a small little spatula, I was able to free the part from the print bed. The print bed had some magic goo on it, a very healthy dose, and so it stuck extra well. Proto Pasta Carbon Fiber on the Ultimaker 2 also stuck to the magic goo on the build plate really well. I used a small spatula and freed it. The 3D Fuel Biome PLA sticks to the build tack I installed on the Formbot T-Rex 2 Plus really well, and it took some time to get that off, but once I did, it all came off of the bed just fine, and the part looked great. It took very little effort for me to remove the part from the CR10S4. The Strong Hero 3D PLA stuck to the magic goo on the glass build plate easily and then removed with very little effort. My GMAX 1.5 XT Plus is outfitted with a very large magnetic build tack removable sheet. So all I had to do was flex it a few times and the piece came off easily. The Raze 3D N2 Plus is running some magic goo on its glass build plate. It comes with uh, build tack installed. I flipped it over and I installed magic goo on there. And essentially I just had to lift the piece off. The magic goo works really well on that glass in the Raze 3D N2 Plus. The Prusa i3 Mark II with the red filament is just a PEI sheet. And what I did was add some glue stick to help things stick down. So I had to use that little mini spatula to get all of the triangles off, but once they were off, they looked good. The Prusa i3 Mark II uh, with the yellow unnamed filament, uh, it was running build tack on it. So I was able to actually flex the build tack to get the triangles off. They looked okay, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. 
Finally, on the Sigma R17 from BCN3D, the combination of the gray melt ink and the purple nightshade from Hawk 3D Proto, it's a really good color combination. I think the Hawk 3D Proto nightshade printed better than the melt ink filament. And with magic goo on the glass build plate, I essentially just picked it up because once the build plate cooled down, the magic goo released the parts and it worked really, really well. <laughs> Here's all the pieces. They're all printed. They all came out. Uh, we should talk about them in a little bit. But first, let's just admire how, how awesome this is. I'm just going to hug my prints. I'm going to hug my prints. Well, how did all the printers do? Let's, let's get a little bit more of an up-close look. We're going to start with the crimson red. Uh, I believe I used 5% infill on this. You can see some of the infill showing through. Uh, the walls are fairly thin and if I push hard in a spot where there isn't a lot of infill, I could crack the print. Uh, but other than that, I think the Ultimaker did a great job and I think, I think this is a good piece. That, that ruby nozzle on that Ultimaker 2, it's just, it impresses me every time I use it. It lays down a really good bead of filament. Uh, and I do love that, uh, that proto pasta carbon fiber. Uh, the, the walls again are a little bit thin. I could have used more perimeters to make it a little bit stronger, but I think with 5% infill, it's a very light piece. Uh, I'll be able to sand this up and it'll glue just fine. Turned out really well. This is the Biome PLA from 3D Fuel. Uh, the, the walls are strong. I, I believe I included more perimeters on this print. Uh, that little chamfer turned out really well, kind of kind of right there. Bottom is good. This is what it looks like coming off of the build tack right there. I think um, I'm a little bit inconsistent on the layers. The, the extrusions aren't as consistent. I will have to try some more filament on there, but otherwise the T-Rex 2 Plus from Formbot it did an amazing job on this piece. I really like it. Here is the Strong Hero Yellow printed on the CR-10S4. Uh, this was the longest print. It took roughly 30 hours. Looks good. I can tell that if I squeeze in parts where the filament doesn't fully cover, it's a little bit weak, but I think it'll be okay. And I think the CR-10S4 did a good job with this print. This one is from the G-Max and this is the Strong Hero PLA. Uh, I think the G-Max did a good job. There's that chamfer right there. That looks good. The bottom is nice and smooth, and that was removed from that magnetic build tech sheet. The insides look good. Hello, hello. This is a good piece. Look at this. Look at this shimmer. This is the Hawk 3D Proto Emerald City, and the Rays machine did a really good job. Feels very light. Um, I'm probably deficient. I could have used uh, deficient in perimeters. I probably could have used one more perimeter just to give it some strength. Little bit of fuzz on the inside, nothing to worry about. I think uh, I think this is a good print, you guys. I really, really think this is a good print. And that color, look at that green. Oh, it's a beautiful green. Emerald City, Seattle represent. These are from the BCN 3D Sigma R17. And uh, at one millimeter, I don't know if you can tell, but the layers for the print using the one millimeter nozzle that had the melt ink PLA, they're a little bit inconsistent. Um, I don't know if you can really, if you can tell right, right there maybe. Let's see if I can get that in the camera. But the purple layers from the nightshade are glorious and I think look good. They look better than the melt ink gray layers. It could be that I'm just not able to see the layer imperfections because the purple's hiding it. I don't know, but both pieces turned out uh, great. I think that my machine could use a little bit of um, upkeep because the bottom layers aren't as squished down as I would want. I know it's using a one millimeter nozzle, but I think I could do a better job. And those will just stack up. There we go. Now to the, uh, the triangles. You can tell that there's still some glue stick on the bottom of these, but uh, those are good, nice, solid triangles. These are good. I'm happy with the way these turned out. The yellow, um, not as good. Let's see if I can find a good example. So a little bit of, little bit of problems there on this one and a little bit of um, ickiness there. I think it was picking up some of the um, some of the older filament dust or something in the build plate. Not perfect by any means, but because these are support pieces, some of them won't be seen. They do have some good sides. I think these will work out just fine. Finally, the triangles with the one millimeter nozzle and those, well, those had some issues. 
<laughs> to say the least. You can see these right here. And uh, I, again, I think I need to relevel my bed because those are, well, those are just kind of terrible right there. But again, there's going to be pieces. So these triangles are going to exist in the middle. And I'll show you. So if this is going to be like this, then I could easily put one of these up at the front. I could put a yellow one here in the back. I can put one of these that didn't turn out so well aesthetically right in the middle. And then I'll have myself my wine rack and then I can put that there. It's gonna fall. All right, now that we have all these pieces here, they need to be sanded just a little bit. That's gonna make the, the glue stick better. I'm gonna use some, some super glue and some Instaset and then we'll get this all put together. All of those bottom layers on the prints, I'm gonna use uh, this tool. It's a deburring tool, it's an edge tool and I can just drag it along an edge to get rid of that uh, bit of filament that sticks out a little bit from being the first layer and from being squished down. Whoa. A little too much. It works really well. So I'm going to go through and deburr the bottom edges of all of these pieces so they'll be able to fit together nicely. And uh, let's hope Sean finds a good music bed to time lapse this all too. Here we go. All right, that worked out really well. I was able to deburr the edges with this tool, of course. I'll put a link to this down in the description. For the edges on the triangles, I think it'll be easier to use sandpaper. And uh, I just happened to have some 220 grit 3M sandpaper I picked up at my local hardware store. It's time for another Sean montage. little dusty right here. What I'm gonna do is uh, clean up a little bit, then I'm gonna sand the bottoms and tops of the pieces of the, the hexagon shapes that need to be put together, and then we'll put it all together. Well, while you were gone, I sanded these down. And uh, even though these printed like this, I want the purple to show, and this is gonna be in the middle where I think you'll just see the end colors. So I'm gonna glue it together like this. I did sand this edge. I sanded this edge and I'm using a wet paper towel just to get some of the dust away. And then same here. I used a wet paper towel to get some of the dust away. I sanded the edges that are going to be married up. And I'm just going to be using some super glue. Should work just great. I'll put this away. And then we'll glue them together. I do want to give a quick shout out to BJB Enterprises. I met Haley from BJB Enterprises at the Matter Hackers party that I was last at. And uh, the tacos were wonderful, of course. And Frank Ippolito introduced me to his friend Haley from BJB. They sent along some Instaset and some Instacure, and that's what I'm gonna be using on this build right here. First, let's get these hexagons together, and then we'll get it all together. So I'm gonna put some Instaset right here. Man, those <laughs> one millimeter layers are kind of thick, so the stuff gets absorbed pretty quick. Let's hope I can get it on there right the first time. <laughs> That's as good as it's gonna get. There's probably a better way to do that. But uh, wow, that held quick. All right. Let's be a little bit more careful with this one. Some glue. Glue is in. Maybe I can just set it down like that to get some working time. There we go. Ow. Of course, you're gonna stick yourself to yourself. All right. Wow, that cures quick. I mean, you don't even really need that, that insta set, but. It's good to know it exists. <sighs> All right, so that's here. Boy, I really did mess up on that one, didn't I? <sighs> you win some, you lose some. That'll be right there. <laughs> this is gonna be difficult. <laughs> I want the fronts to match up, right? So maybe, oh, look at that. Um, the one millimeter nozzle pieces from the Sigma are a little bit short compared to the other ones because these are from the Ultimaker are nearly exact. I wonder if it had to do with layer height. All right, so what I'm gonna do is on the 
on the front, I will attach triangles right here, right here, and then I'll attach it to this piece right here, make sure that it attaches just fine. Yes, and uh, for the front, we're gonna be using these orange ones. And they will go on just like that. All right. Let's see. <laughs> ah, always get to the finish line and then mess up. That's what I say. Here we go. Cure so fast. Jeez. Okay. And I'll get uh, another one lined up and I'll, I'll get that attached right here. Hey, 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 look at that. I didn't even glue myself to myself. Not even once. All right, that's still curing. Wow, that didn't cure right away. Okay. All right, I'll use a little instant set. Let's just see. All right. There we go. Now that's on. All right, I'll, I'll let you guys see. I'm gonna have to stand up for this one. Rip. If that would have been the right time to use. Oops. <laughs> Guess I already had the cap off. All right, we'll let that sit. That side has some of that. I will put this right here. It's going to drip a little bit, but that's okay. I'll add just a little bit right here because it seems to seep down. Don't glue yourself to the table. Uh, all right, we'll fix that. <laughs> all right, we'll use uh, yellow ones in the back. They will essentially go like so. Rather than this Insta set, I think I'm gonna switch to the other uh, super glue that I have that doesn't seem to dry nearly as fast or cure. Uh, there we go. It's not as uh, runny. All right, and then I wonder if I can just, uh, I'm gonna spray these real quick. I will use the runny stuff to put it down the side. And then I go, there we go, that'll hold it. And it is not glued to the table. I always have to check. There we go. In fact, I will spray this like that. And then I will use my non-runny stuff. And then I will place it. Let's see if that works. It should, should work. Right, I'll just add a little bit more because it runs. <laughs> uh, okay, I did uh, take a small piece out of my desk. Right there. But that's okay. I have a new desk bench coming that I uh, won't have to worry about. All right, let me get these on and then uh, we'll move on to the next layer. Next, let's see, I want gray at the top, so I'm gonna use yellow and green next. Those will essentially sit right here. I can't believe this is actually working. Some glue right here, glue right here. I will spray this side. <laughs> this is actually working. Close. <laughs> it's done. All right, uh, let me clean up. I'm gonna move it to the side and then we will have some final thoughts. Here it is. It's done. Let's see if the wine bottle fits. I mean, I measured, but. There we go. Oh, this is fantastic. All right. So this was the culmination of an inspiration after watching David Picciuto's video. And I thought, well, what if I could replicate this or remake this with 3D design and 3D printing? And essentially, this was a success. Some of the things I would have done different though. One, I would have used a different 
super glue, I would have uh, used something a little bit more viscous so that it didn't run onto my table and uh, glue the piece to the table. That's my own fault, obviously. I need to get a little bit more experience with glues and uh, this, this Insta set and uh, putting pieces together and sanding them. I think I just need to get more experience with that. Um, on the modeling side, I think that I should have modeled in some uh, registration marks or little tabs or something. I could easily see how one of these triangles could have some tabs on either side that would correspond with little holes or indentations on the hexagons. I think that would have come in handy for putting them together and uh, maintaining dimensions. I think that it actually turned out well, being that nine different 3D printers were used to make this. <laughs> Each of these hexagons was at least a day, 24 hours, and you're looking at some of them that were 30. We're, we're looking at more than 130 hours of 3D printing. And the reason I could do it so quickly is because I used nine different 3D printers. If you wanted to do this yourself, it might take a little bit longer, although maybe you're not gonna do it for wine bottles. Maybe you're gonna do it for something else. Regardless of all that, this was a lot of fun. And I think that uh, taking a woodworking project to see if it's feasible in 3D printing, I think is a fantastic idea. I think I wanna do more of it, of course. Leave a comment down below if you think that this is a good idea. I think that in this case, woodworking is a little bit better because you can better control the dimensions. And I think that it takes a lot less time when you're using a bandsaw, a table saw, a sander, and some wood glue. A big thanks to David Picciuto over at Make Something for producing that video, being a good guy all around. David, all the high fives to you. Uh, thanks for being a good sport and letting me try to remake your woodworking project as a 3D printing project. Beyond that, you guys, hey, you know what? Thanks for watching this video, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, and consider ringing that bell to be notified of when cool new stuff is uploaded to the channel. And a big thanks to everyone that supports me via Patreon, YouTube Red, PayPal donations, YouTube sponsorship, and for letting the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five.